In this video, I will show you how to add an SSH key to your server. If your server is currently using a password and you want to change that so that you can use an SSH key, I will show you how to do it. So if you're on Windows, download and install Git and follow along with Git Bash. Mac or Linux, just use the normal terminal. So the first step, we are going to generate an SSH key and then we're going to add the SSH key to our server and then we're going to test if we can log in with it. So generate the SSH key is just SSH keygen and then I want to choose a type of key so dash T and I'm going to use ED25519 key and then I want to give the file a name and the benefit of giving the file a name is because you can is that you can generate multiple keys in future and use them on different servers without having to override any of your keys. So dash F will just define a file name and we want to store it inside of the SSH directory. So that's my home folder. If you see this, this is just my home folder. And then inside of my home folder, there's a folder called SSH. And then inside of the SSH folder, there's a folder called tutorials that I want to use. And then inside of that directory, that is where I'm going to generate my SSH key. That is where I'm going to generate my SSH keys. So I'll just call them DO keys. And that's just stands for digital ocean keys. You can name them something you can recognize. And another thing that can help you recognize your keys in future is just add a comment. So I will add a comment here and I can just say keys for DO but you can use this with any VPS. I'm just using DigitalOcean as an example. So once you do this, confirm the name of your keys, the location where you want your keys, and then you can generate the keys. I'll just press enter to generate. And you can also add a passphrase. And a passphrase is important because it protects your key. If somebody else gets your key, they can use your key. But without the passphrase, they won't be able to use it directly. So I'm going to add a passphrase. If you're going to log in manually, add the passphrase. Confirm the passphrase enter all right my key is generated the next step is to add it to my server so to add it to my server i'll just do Control l to clear the screen and then i will do ssh copy id so ssh copy id will help us to copy the public key to the server if you don't know how these commands are going to follow each other which one comes first you can do ssh copy id dash h and it's going to show you this so you can see there the SSH copy ID will come first. Any directives you want to give this command will come there. And then you'll put in the identity of the file. And then if you're using a different port, you'll put the port number. And then finally, the username and the IP address of your server. So I just wanted to show you this in case you don't want to copy from somewhere. You can actually just get these commands here directly from the help text. So I'm going to close that. And I want to do SSH copy ID. The first thing. Let's give it the identity of the file. And the identity of the file is a file we've just created. If you scroll back up, you're going to see the links to your public key and the link to your private key. So all of it is there. You can copy these links and save them somewhere if you don't know how to get back to them. So I'll copy the public key. That's the one that I need to add on my server. Shift insert to paste in git bash. Then the user is root at my IP. Let's come back here, copy my IP, paste. This is going to add this key to our server. So I'm going to press enter, but you need to be ready with your password because at some point you're going to enter your user password. So dot pub is the one you're adding to the key. Make sure you're not adding the other one, which is the private key. So add the dot pub key. And then I'm going to press enter. So it's going to confirm whether the key is already added to my server or not. If it is not added, it's going to add it. Let me copy my root password. Are you sure you want to continue connecting? So this is because uh, this is the first time I'm actually connecting to the server. I have not connected to it. So that's why it's asking for the fingerprint. So when you see this, just type yes. If you have already connected to the server before you've logged into the server, then you're not going to see this message. And that is a message about the fingerprint. So I'm going to enter. So as this is happening, something else I want to add is that your user 
is what you'll use here. In this case, I'm adding it for root. That's why I'm using the root user. If there's another user that you're adding the key for, that is a user that you're going to use instead of using the root user. So down here, we're being asked for the password. I'm just going to paste in my password, press enter. And this is a password for your server user. So let's see, copy. There we go. The key has been added. Now the next step, of course, is to log in with the key. And I'm just going to go ahead and log in with the key. So I'll do control L to clear the screen. And I'm just going to press the up arrow. I don't want to type again. I'm just going to remove that. So to log in, I can log in with the private key. The private key doesn't have dot pub. And here as well, I'm just going to remove copy ID. So I can SSH with the identity of my key. And that is the user. And if there was a port, you can add the port number there after. So I'm just going to press enter. And this should be logging us in with our private key. Since I added a passphrase, I'm going to need to enter my passphrase. Make sure you can remember the passphrase. All right, I'm logged into my server. I can see the updates I can do. So I can just update those. And since this is Ubuntu, I can do apt update. So I can upgrade the updates, apt, up, grid, enter. Press tab to go to OK and then just press enter. Right, I'll press Control L again to clear the screen. Now the next thing, since you have set up an SSH key for your server, you can disable password authentication. So to do that, you can just do vi etc ssh slash ssh d conf tab to autocomplete it. Here, I want to find password authentication and disable it. So to log into this server, you're going to need to log in with an SSH key. Since I'm using Vim, I can just forward slash and then search for password authentication and I can see it's set to yes, but it's commented out so I can press enter and I'm just going to press N to see if there's another occurrence of password authentication because usually you'll find that there may be another occurrence of password authentication whereby it is allowing or disabling password authentication. Okay, so there's no other occurrence of password authentication. So I'm going to use this one and I can first of all delete. I can delete the comment that is the hash in front of it. I can go into insert mode and I'll just press I to go into insert mode, delete that and then we want to make this no. So this means that logging in with the password is forbidden. So I'm going to escape, escape, and then shift ZZ to save. And then I'm going to restart SSH. System CTL reload SSH. Let me open another tab and try to log in with the password. So opening another instance of Gitbash. And then I will try to log in SSH. I'll try to log in with the password. Enter. Okay. Uh, let's see if I can log in. This is actually a good thing. If it allows me to log in, it's going to give me an opportunity to teach you something here. Okay. So you can see I'm able to log in with my password. So what do you think that means? That means that DigitalOcean has another SSH configuration file that they use instead of the default one. There's another one that they use. So let's confirm if that's true. I'm just going to do ls slash etsy slash ssh slash sshd tab to to complete and then it's a directory sshd configuration. So you can see there are two files inside here. And this means that one of the files is overriding my changes. So what I can do is to look into these files to see what we have. So I'm going to do VI. I'm assuming it's the first one. Based on past experience, it's the first one. So I'm just going to do 50. And then tab to autocomplete it. 
I want to see I want to see what's inside of this file. And you can see password authentication is set to yes. So I need to set this to no if I want to disable password authentication. So I can do shift A to edit this. And that is no escape and then shift ZZ to save. And if I reload SSH, I can just do this time round service SSH restart. All right, so now if I was to try and log in with a password, let me open a new git bash window. And I will try to log in with the password SSH root shift at paste enter. And now you can see permission denied public key. This means that if you ever see this, it means that you can only log in with an SSH key. And if for any reason you need to log in with your password, you have to log in with the key and then disable password authentication. So that's the case if perhaps you're using SFTP and you need to log in without a key, then you'll have to disable password authentication. It's important to note that in as much as most configurations for SSH are usually placed here, cloud providers nowadays are creating their own file. And in this file, they add configuration files that will override everything in that file. So you have to go into this directory to confirm if there's another file that is probably overriding your SSH configuration and make changes in that file. Or you can create your own file. If there's no file there, you can create your own file and then use that instead. All right, that's it for this one. You've seen how you can add an SSH key to your VPS. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know.